One of the major advances my lab has made in the last number of years is to recognize that not every leukemia cell is the same, and there are leukemia stem cells that drive the leukemia in the same way that normal blood stem cells drive normal blood development. And by characterizing that development in leukemia and comparing it to normal, you want to create a fingerprint of each of the leukemia properties that every patient has. And we can then link those leukemia properties to their response to drugs. And in that way, we've been able to tailor our therapy in a way that is much better than the current one-size-fits-all kind of therapy that uh, exists today. Anything that happened in my career could be traced back to the mentors that I was exposed to. And I hope that one of the contributions that I can make is the mentorship that I've given to the trainees who have been through my lab and my colleagues uh, who have been benefited from the insight that I've had. Princess Margaret is the best place in the world for doing leukemia and leukemia stem cell research. We need a very close relationship with our clinical colleagues to get human leukemia samples in order for us to carry out our stem cell work. And uh, that relationship has been hugely important. We could not have done it anywhere else. So the major advance uh, that I see coming forward is the marriage between cell biology and molecular biology. So molecular approaches have been really, really good to characterizing what goes wrong in a cell or how does a cell work? You know, what makes a stem cell a stem cell? Uh, how does it go wrong? Uh, we can understand that at the level of genes and DNA, but until recently, that's required millions and millions of cells. Now we can do all of those studies at single cell resolution. My life has been, there's a lot of things that weren't ever planned, you know, my career just evolved. Uh, I just had the good fortune to interact with the right people at the right time and uh, research, you know, landed in just the right way. One of the major difficulties of COVID is that uh, it prevented us from getting together. Science is a hugely social interaction. You know, you're always feeding ideas off of each other. And when you can't do that, it, uh, it really, is, it really you know, holds people back. My lab in COVID has been in a very unique situation. Many of my postdocs were near the ends of their projects. It meant that people could step away from their research and focus on writing their papers up. We published more papers in the last two years than I ever uh, in my career. I grew up on a small farm in, in Manitoba. Uh, went to a one-room school. Um, when I got to high school, uh, I ended up taking, you know, the usual sort of uh, math, uh, chemistry, physics, uh, something. But I went to a really, really small high school and we never had biology. So I actually never got trained in biology. And after uh, high school, I ended up going and taking an x-ray course to becoming an x-ray technician. And that was my first exposure to biology. But that was the seed that got me going after I finished that program to go on and say, you know, I really want to go to university and see if I can just explore this a little bit more. My interests and my passions mostly relate around my family. I've got you know, two great kids, they're all married, and they've uh, delivered to us uh, four amazing grandkids, and uh, that's, that's my passion. That's my outside non-work. 